I want to talk about phone systems. They connect a little bit differently for this episode, so I want you guys to have a visual on that equipment as we go through. I'm going to talk about PRIs with a PBX system, a POTS line, and then I'm not going to go over SIP. We'll do that when we do voice over IP phones and troubleshooting. In general, SIP is going to send the phone calls over your data circuit. In the other video, we refer to the lines coming in as internet lines. We call them circuits. So whether we're talking about our fiber circuit, our broadband circuit, our PRI circuit. So if someone says, what kind of circuit do you have? That's what they're referring to. We'll refer to our lines from now on as circuits. Your primary rate interface circuit. A lot of companies have moved over to SIP or voice over IP because of the cost. You will see this technology still, and that's why I want you guys to know how to navigate it. Let's go over the PRI first. Then we'll talk about the POTS line. Once you understand the PRI side, it's a lot easier to understand why we would use the POTS line. And then we'll go over a little bit of troubleshooting and the scenarios that you might see and why I'm actually bringing it up. Another one of my amazing drawings here to explain so from the pole we go into the building and we hit a smart jack here's a photo of a smart jack so the line comes in right here connects to this box this box right here is actually the smart jack it has this little fold up window so you can see the t1 cards inside of it these cards slide into each one of these slots and then they connect down here with some ports so this key if you can get one they're pretty universal i have one on my keychain so if you can find one you'd be able to open this up and then if your circuit is not working you can pull the card out and then push it back in it has these little indicator lights on it if you're getting a red light on one of these then you know there could be a fault this cabinet is your demer and then it comes out of here and this is a wafer that it's actually connecting to so instead of connecting to a biscuit we'll connect to something called a wafer a wafer or also called a 66 block correctly the jargon is wafer but usually you see this front on view you'll actually see if you look down at my camera it'll look just like this the wires are actually connecting to this the reason is because they only need a pair we don't need the full four pair that we have in an ethernet cable throw back to our diagram here so it comes off of the smart jack and it connects right here. Here's another angle of the smart jack. So underneath it, this is where the ports are. So each one of those cards that slide into, we can plug a cable into here and then it'll go over to our 66 block or our wafer block. Back to our diagram. So we're gonna come off of our smart jack here and we will connect to our wafer block. And then this will go up in the ceiling, down into our server room, and it will plug into our PBX or our phone system. Not all phone systems are going to look the same, but now that we have connectivity to our PBX system, the system could be rack mounted and look something like this, more of a desktop or a server flipped onto its side. The one that we use most often and I'm most used to seeing is this cabinet style right here. So this is the front of the cabinet. It's the same exact one that I showed you the photo of, but I popped the case off of it. So these are the cards inside of it. Each one of the cards has a different job. So you could have your voicemail card or you can have your T1 card. This is actually your power supply where you turn it on and turn it off. There's a reset button right, right here. Don't touch that. If you needed to, if the cards go bad, you can pop these cards out and then you can just replace them that easy. This is the back of the system where your circuit is actually gonna to connect to, and then you'll have a pair coming out of it, and you'll connect it to your patch panel. So this cable, they can go from 10 pair, 25 pair, 60 pair, 100 pair. What it means is that inside of this jacket, you have a certain amount of pairs. So this is a really small one. You can have them where they're a lot thicker, especially if you have 100 pair going from building to building. You connect each one of these to the back of your patch panel, so it would end up looking something like this. If you're ever looking for your voice patch panel, you can always look at the back of it and see which one looks like this, and that's more than likely the one. So if you've seen one with a bunch of data cables in it, this is more than likely not your voice patch panel. On the back, that pair would come up into the back of your voice patch panel here. You can tell I only did five ports just so that it'd be easier to draw. And then from there on the actual PBX, the phone system, inside of it, they would program each one of the wires coming out of the pair and going into these each one at a time. They would program an extension on each one. And then we just need to take our extension one and go to a patch that's going over to an office. And then your next one, we go to another patch and that would go to another office and so on. This top panel here would be labeled A, just like we said in episode one. The faceplates themselves, you would see V1 or V2, etc. The patch panel that actually connects directly to the PBX system. So there's two different kinds of ports that we can have. The top, SLMA, subscriber line module analog. And then I believe it's subscriber line module office. What this means is these are all analog ports and then these are all digital ports down here. The difference between analog and a digital port is when the data actually travels through the wire. An analog line is using electronic pulses where the digital line is actually converting it into binary. Fax machines, credit card machines, those will still use analog lines and that's why we need them. And then the digital line is your decimal. You'll see here that this is SLMA one through 24. So that means one through port 24. So they won't label these individually. If I only have 24 ports that I need to be analog, I won't waste the rest of the patch panel on blank ports. So I'll label this SLMO. So I know that these are my digital lines and this is actually one through 24. So if someone said we program the number on SLMO four, I would just go one, two, three, and four. So this is SLMO four right here on 28. And then from here, I would plug this into my patch panel that's actually going into an office. As a visual, the phone call is coming through the PRI circuit to the smart jack, to the wafer. So this is our DMARC. So now we're responsible from here. It goes through the building, down into the PBX, out of the PBX, into SLMO port 4, and then into port 1, which is going back to the user's desk. That's the flow of the phone call.
If you notice, very, very similar to data. The only thing is we're using some older technology, which is the smart jack and then the wafer block. I'll show you how to punch those wafer blocks, but let's get over to POTS lines. I'll show you how those work, why we use them, and how to troubleshoot. A POTS line is a plain old telephone service. We use these to go through things that we don't need to connect to our PBX system, and that creates less variables for it to break, and we can also create redundancy. So if something does happen to our PBX system, our POTS lines don't go down. So for instance, we go through from the pole, and we would connect up through our wafer more than likely. I have seen biscuits here, but more than likely a wafer through the ceiling will bypass the server room and we'll go directly to a biscuit here. And then we'll connect this to, let's say a fire panel. So fire panels are red panels. They're usually not in the server room. They're normally in a maintenance closet. That way someone else in the building can get to it if needed. If there's a fire, the fire panels control your alarms, your strobes, those handles that you pull to trigger the fire system. If you're walking by and you see a fire, you pull that handle. The line calls 911 and the fire department comes. So these fire panels and alarm panels just like them. So for security system, what they do is every night, the provider will call into the firebox and then the firebox will pick up and it will send a ping back to let it know that it's communicating correctly. So the reason I bring this up is I've had to troubleshoot a lot of these because sometimes these lines will go bad or the panels will go bad. What will happen is the fire company will call in and it won't get a response. So they will contact the company, which the company usually contacts you. And they say that the fire panel isn't responding and we need to figure out what's going on. What we would do first is we go to the fire panel. We'd have to find it wherever it is in the maintenance closet. Sometimes you have to open these up. You would disconnect it directly from the fire panel and then you would hook up your butt set. Or for me, it's my old telephone that I bought from Walmart. It's in my what's in my bag video if you want to see it. But I would test from here back. As long as I can call in and out from here back, I know that it's something wrong with the fire panel. I'll disconnect this line from my biscuit and I'll hook my phone directly up to the biscuit, call through. If I still can't get out, I'll do the same thing over here. I'll disconnect from here and I'll plug my butt set in right here. Because this is connected to a wafer, you'll have to pull this wire and then you'll connect it down to my camera here. You'll connect it to one of these mods. You'll just pull this out and then you'll terminate it to the correct pin and then you'll plug your phone in directly right there and call out. At this point, if I still can't get out, I know that it's on my provider side because it's past my DMARC, right? But if I can get out from here, then I know that it's somewhere in this wire. So then I have to try shoot this wire. Again, you'll see a lot of companies use this. They use these POTS lines for the redundancy, also to take out any variables for fire panels, alarm panels, credit card machines. You'll also see them on some fax lines if they don't have another service set up and they need those analog lines. Close up episode two, we have a multiple building scenario and multiple patch panels. I want you guys to be able to see this. If you have a campus environment, it's really common that you'll have one phone system and then that phone system will feed another building. So I just wanted to go over these multiple patch panels, what you'll see and how they connect. So we have the PBX here. It's going up into our PBX patch panel here. We have a building B patch panel that's inside of building A. It's labeled this way so you know that it's going over to building B. So let's go, let's say port five on the PBX and we'll go to port two for building B. On the back of this patch panel, each one of these, all five, run through the conduit and into the back. So two will do the same thing, three will do the same thing, four and five. The call is going from the PBX up through the PBX patch into the building B patch panel, down through the conduit, this is the outside, if you couldn't tell on my sweet clouds here. And it'll go up into the building A patch panel. So when we look at these patch panels, we can tell if it says building A, we just know that it's going over to the other building. If our call was going from PBX5 into port 2, on the other side, it would be coming out of port 2. And then we would just go into data 1, and that would go up through the ceiling, down the wall, into this port, and then out of it, we would connect it to our phone. With a PBX, you can't share ports with the computer. With VoIP, you can. So we would have another port here that would be, let's say, A2. And that's what you would connect your computer to, and this would go to the switch like normal. So the reason I bring that up, give you an idea of a voice over IP feature. We'll talk about voice over IP phones eventually. If you only had one outlet, it would go from the switch to the patch panel, just like up here, A5 to the wall plate, which would be A5. And let's say you only have one outlet in that office. Voice over IP, you can plug it into the phone and then plug the connection directly into the computer so you can daisy chain off of it. It's just something to keep in mind. I'm super excited to be done with cabling concepts. We gotta do some terminations, some 66, some 110 blocks. I'll do an end in the next video. It should be really short. And then we'll get into the network. I'm pretty excited about that. So that's it for cabling concepts. Let's get ready for episode three.